Good morning, students. I'm called Yusuf Zakom. I'm a train in the Sedo Hango Ikirezi Tivet School. Now, I'm going to teach the module called the starting system. But, you know, that last time uh, we saw every component of starting system and their function and its operating principle. But now we are going on learning outcome 3.3, three, three, which says that testing of stetamoto components by the end of this reason, the students will be able to know how to test each component of the tamoto. They will be also able to determine the fault. Not only that, but also knowing the component be replaced. So, as I told you last time, I have seen installation of this starting system. But now we are going to focus on internal parts of this theta motor. But I can remind you that this theta motor has function of turning the engine flywheel, flywheel in order to allow us to find the first combustion. Because after starting, it comes this pinion. It comes in the initial position. Similarly, that after, after advancing, after doing this motion, it will turn the flywheel. Then it's it will be back later in initial position after doing its job. It means that this starting system is there for only cranking the flywheel in the time of starting our vehicle. Now, here I have some materials I'm going to use. I have spanners. You see, there's the spanners will help me. You see, there are some screwdrivers for removing screws and spanners for removing the bolts. Here are the soldering. Maybe during testing, you can find out the problem, which can require soldering. If it is available, you can use this soda and gun. Anyway, here there is also multimeter. Some of the component of theta motor use multimeter. I mean electrical force for this theta motor use multimeter to determine, to determine those forces. And mechanical force, we can use our own eyes to determine the fault. For example, this pinion, if it has a problem, I can see if the teeth have been damaged. I can find the problem visually. Anyway, now, let me disassemble this stator motor. So if you remember, I told you that it has these three many parts. So now the switch, engagement, relay, and motor or electric motor, which will be here inside. So now let me start to disassemble my stator motor. This is sonoid, as I have said, sonoid switch. 
I'm going to remove it. But here there is, there is a nut, which is just uh, tightening this wire. This input wire which supplies the current from the solenoid to the stator motor. I'm going first to remove this nut. Yes. Now, after removing this input wire, I will remove this part called solenoid switch. Yes. There are some two, two long bolts which are holding this solenoid, so I have to remove them. You see? I have to remove them. It's not good to remove one bolt while another one no, is fixed. It's not good. We have to balance. To balance so that our component may be released as well as possible. Now I can remove the bolt. Yes. After removing the bolt, solenoid switch will have opportunity of being removed easily. Now let me continue to disassemble the our stator motor. I'm going to separate the two parts, electrical motor and engagement parts. Let me separate them. I'm going to remove this engagement part by removing this screw. Yes. Now you see the screw are being removed. Eh? You see? Yes, I have to put every component nice place where to be easy for me to find them. But before separating this part, let us also remove this bolt. Eh? Because there is some magnetic field here, it can make this part not be removed as we wish. Yeah. Let me remove first this cover of electrical motor or stator motor part. But you have to make sure where every component have been removed and you put in the only place to adjust it ensembling our stator. You know this part, uh, the spring and solenoid uh, component of full stator. But as you see here, there is 
lock which is holding this pinion. It seems that it cannot be removed unless we remove this lock. We are going first to remove this lock by placing the internal spring like this. It will be easy for us to remove this lock huh? by using this small screw drive. Yes, you see? Wow. You see that I have separated motor and the engagement layer. You let me even separate, disassemble this solenoid switch by removing this screw in equal manner. Yes. Now I have already separated the possible part of our stator motor. You see? Yes. Now we are going to find out the electrical faults by using our multimeter and the mechanical faults by using our own eyes in order to check their fault of different component of our stator motor. Let me start by let us first check out the faults electrical components of stator motor. This is amateur, as I told you before. So we are going to determine the faults of this component of stator motor called amateur. It has shaft, amateur stack, and commutator, which has the bars. There's a bars, commutator bars. So in order to determine the amateur which doesn't have a problem, we use three techniques. One is called 180 angled technique. It means that this cycle has 360 degrees. We are going to imagine maybe a line which can pass through here in 180 degrees. Then we set our multimeter. So we have to set in the on in the lowest resistance. You see very well. Have set our multimeter in the arm. Now we are going to see whether the the value are the same on the commutator bars as I have told you before. Now I can measure you see They are in the range of one. Uh, the changing in the measurement is not a portrait, but the, the result might be about the same. Yeah. Now I have seen one. We can use another side. 
can you rotate it and uh, use another side in order to determine whether they have same same measurement you know let us assume that it is one also as i have told you you have to keep in mind that the good commutator has to be one or indicate this word in minute meter open loop it should be good yeah i have said that i uh, will use three techniques in order to determine the problems of how much uh, i have finished one let me use another techniques another techniques is measuring the bar to bar as i have told you these are commutator bars they must be continuity between of one commutator bar and another one yes let me change the setting of my digital multimeter now i'm going to set in continuity by changing in this direction if multimeter is set in continuity you you can just here the beep yeah it is ringing it means that current can pass you see yeah now as i have told you there must be continuity between of these commutator bars as i have told you i'm going to show them to you but you will see the result in my digital multimeter bar to bar it means that multimeter it will beep or it will ring if it will not ring it means that this amateur will have problem it will be need to be replaced by good one yes ba to ba technique you see there is continuity between of each bars here there is continuity it means that this commutator doesn't have problem but i will take decision create decision after trying all three techniques i have showed you two techniques but let me also try the last one by using multimeter yeah as i have told you we have used the 100 and 800 bar now we are going to use the last one called how much bar to how much stack as i have told you now do this they must not continue it how much stack to bar they must not be continue with those are three techniques of testing our amateur similarly that our amateur it is doesn't have any problem it's good let me continue now i'm going to test another thermal component called feed coil this one is called feed coil but it is the it has um, another part called brushes and thumbs it the is, is is where the brushes are accommodated 
you know where the blushes are accommodated, accommodated in this blush housing, or blush ensemble. Yeah. Here I use two techniques in order to determine the problem. But as exception, I have told you that the value, usually, the value must be usually one or indicating open loop. If it's less one, it's a big problem. If it's more than one, maybe from two to three, it should be another issue. But it can, it, it can vary. It can vary. We don't care about the value, but they must be nearby. Hmm? The value must be about to be the same as I have told you. Yes, now let me test this component called feed coil, but it has another component which has carbon blushes. As you know, is if we take current plus which will come from the sonoid plus magnetic field, these are blushes. They are they have they are uh, positive blushes and negative blushes. Even if this commutator has north and south, according to the magnetic field law, it will make this commutator to rotate. If you take a current plus magnetic field which be which will be created which I find the motion of moving as I told you before our stator motor can do two motions advanced motion or axial motion and rotary motion because we saw that its function is to crank engine flywheel Similar that it's adverse and crank, then it's coming back in initial position. Yeah. Now let me test this component. This is amateur. I, I'm sorry, this is a um, laminated stack. This is called laminated stack. But there's a way which are inside the other. Fitted coil. Yes. I'm going to measure. I will use two techniques as after you. First one is to measure continuity between this supplying wire or input wire supplying it from solenoid to the electric motor and this laminated stack let us set our millimeter in continuity okay the master ring yeah i think that you here now i'm going to measure the continuity when there will be continuity it means that this feed coil has serious problem it need to be replaced there is no continuity you know you understand there is no continuity another thing to test i'm going to test the resistance i have to set in lowest resistance you see but as i have told you they might be about the same, the, the same ohm. But value, measurement values is not important, but they must be about the same. Yes. Now I'm going to measure. Here, this input and that put wires to the positive carbon brushes. 
you see one one even here might be one you see one yeah it means that this feed coil doesn't have any problem but blast for blushes these are the blushes more more there is the amateur rotate more this thickness is reduced when there will be this thickness will be short so that these brushes cannot fit commutators to mean that our stator motor will not rotate rotate we shall never find rotation motion yeah now we deal about the mechanical uh, faults but even if brushes you can see whether they they have been owned out and replace the even a pinion that mesh with flywheel in order to crank the engine eh? you see its teeth its visual visual foot you can see whether they have been damaged and you replace them yeah even all component here if they are damaged it is very easy to find the problem. Now, I'm going to test solenoid. Solenoid help us to, to push, to push the fork, but this is the motor doesn't have fork. In order to determine that this solenoid is in a good condition, it must move forward and backward. When we test, we can use battery. There's no problem. I've told you that it must move forward and backward motion by using a battery. You have to connect this to this pin from ignition key from ignition switch but I'm going to test it directly without using ignition switch there is problem I have found inside of this solenoid let me show you. I've seen that there is a wire which is not connected to this terminal. So I have to fix this problem by using soldering iron. As you have seen this, there is a problem. This wire is not connected to its terminal. So I'm going to connect it. Then after we shall find out the result. can be easy to test this solenoid by using a battery because if it is working well or if it is in a good condition it might move either 
forward and backward. Yes, they may do it. I will connect negative terminal. Negative terminal. Okay. To battery. Yes. To set a motor housing anyway on the earth. Yes. Then it should be required to move positive voltage of battery to the to the spin where con ignition switch current come from to solenoid you see it is moving forward and backward motion it means that our theta solenoid doesn't have any problem because I have fixed that problem you have already seen now it is time for assembling our stator motor Yeah, let me assemble the set motor. Yes. Yes, brushes. I've already fitted the brushes and the amateur. Yeah, let me clean this component so that this car part can be easily fixed. Yes, now it's okay. Let me assemble this pinion. Now I have fixed the pinion. Let me also fix this gear which we take motion from motor to the gadgetary ray part. There's a bearing. I have to fit them inside in order to allow free and secure motion of this this idea. Yes. Going. To connect stator motor and stator motor part or electric motor and sonoid switch. See, there is a uh, switch housing here, which needs to be fitted, but, but you have to make sure that uh, there's a holes. I will find a place where the circuit to be fitted here will just enter, yeah. You see, now if I put the screw, the screw here, they cannot be fitted. I have to 
to rotate so that the screw can be find a place where to be bolted. Yes. You have to fix it properly so that it cannot lose its component while well, it's just in working or in, in operation. Yeah. Now I'm going to fix this engagement ray part to be fixed here. As you see. But here there is uh, some spring. Spring. Next time we will see how to do them yourselves. Because first time, if you remember, you were just doing them in groups. But next time, everyone will disassemble and assemble state motor himself or herself without any help of another someone. So that will help us to make the skills that have better destiny. Okay, thank you very much. My telephone number is zero seven eight one nine four three double eight then five thank you